the channel, it's your boy MC. Uh, what I want to share with you what I got in the shop today is this EF Wagon H2B swap. Um, it's actually been in a video before on my channel. I did a uh, fuel system intake and put the battery in the back, a couple other small things. But um, it's back, so what we're going to do is do the uh, function form coilovers. We're doing a rear disc conversion. We got the e-brake cables brand new. We got uh, the steel braid lines brand new. We have EBC uh, rotors and pads. Um, we have the 4040 proportion valve that we're gonna mount up here on the firewall. And what else? Oh, uh, and Hasport mounts. We're gonna replace these innovative with the Hasports. Um, and a couple other things, but those are the, you know, the main details we're gonna do. But, um, oh, and also, we got some new shoes for it. We're gonna put some new wheels on it, and uh, I'm excited to see what it's gonna look like with these on there. Oh, and also with the uh, extended wheel studs as well, and some new lug nuts, so it's gonna look good. Just gonna be a nice transformation for this EF uh, wagon. So if y'all ready, I'm ready, let's get it. So we got function and form coilovers, rear calipers, wheel studs this is a bracket that uh the calipers bolt to steel braided lines we got new e-brake cables rotors pads ebc and hasport mounts along with some te37s going on there yes sir EF wagon chassis uh, with this rear trailing arm is a little bit different. We can't really just swap a uh, EG or um, not EG, but like the Integra or EK trailing arm on here. It's made a little different. But uh, what we found was they make a kit um, from EFparts.com. So what you would do is you just take all this off and these brackets. You bolt the bracket to it. Um, probably like this way, most like that, like this. And um, you can bolt the caliper to this bracket, and that'll be your uh, rear disc conversion. And you put your, you know, your disc on here, and uh, you're good to go. Obviously, with your lines and the e-brake cables, they gotta be swapped out as well. But yeah, it should be a simple process. Shouldn't be, you know, a pain. I know some people don't like doing trailing arms because, um, you know, dealing with the whole arm and the bushings and all that. But uh, we'll see. We'll have to take this uh, wheel bearing off, but um, might replace it with new since we're already that far into it. You might as well put new wheel bearings in the rear, so um, we'll see.
sliders, those little egg things. Woo! Gives me the creeps. Alright. So uh, these the shoes are removed. And like I said, I'll probably take this bearing off. And like I said, or not like I said. All right, so now that the shoe is off, uh, I'm about to spray some brake cleaner on all these, these little egg looking things, the spider, but uh, uh, we'll take the wheel bearing off. We'll take this big plate off on um, the dust shield and obviously this, but um, and then put that bracket on there and then mount up the other calipers. We'll have to swap out the e-brake cables, which are here. We'll have to go back into the car and we'll be adding the steel braided lines. So. Um, those will those will be the, the steel braid lines will go from the caliper, um, and then they'll go all the way to the front to the proportion valve under the hood. So, like I said, I'll probably replace this with new. The wheel bearing will go back on there, and you know you can put we'll put the rotor put the rotor on there, then your caliper and everything, and that'll be the rear disc conversion. Pretty simple. I like that. Um, like of course, you know we're replacing the cable and the brake lines, but that's kind of how it'll be, I guess. Not bad.
brake cables um, is fastened on by a couple of 12 millimeter bolts. Um, we'll take these off and then up towards the center, there'll be a little plate held on by a couple 10 millimeter bolts and we'll have to take that off as well and then do the same thing on the other side and pull these straight out. side a couple 12 millimeter bolts on it on So up in here, there will be a little plate there. That's where the cables are going in. I'll have to take that off as well. A couple uh, 10 millimeter bolts there. And then we'll pull the e-brake cables away from the actual e-brake handle. And these will come out. So once you got the couple bolts out of that um, cap right there, you will see, let me see if it'll focus in. There you go. So that's what it'll look like kind of. All right, so that's what it'll look like once you have that cap off. Um, you see the cables in there, they're going inside the car you'll undo those from the e-brake handle itself and then pull these all the way out. All right, we're here in the interior part. I've already got the e-brake, uh, you know, the center console off. So this is what it'll look like. You'll see the e-brake cables here going to the e-brake handle. What we'll do is you can take, you'll, you'll take these two 12s off, but um, you'll just turn this sideways and take the cable out of here and then the same thing over here, and then just pull it out from the bottom of the car again. And that'll be it for the removal of the old cables. Just pull it out. So the reason you have to swap these out is for, you know, this is from the, the drum setup. The drum brake setup. So it will not work with uh, a rear disc, you know, a caliper setup, so you gotta swap these out. So for the brake lines, I will actually, so they run through here, they run through the hard line, and then they go up to the soft line here, back to a hard line, and they actually, on this model, on the EF right here, it actually goes into 
the chassis and it is inside the car actually and goes in the interior up through the firewall and then out the firewall to the proportion valve so i'll probably run the steel braided lines that in the same route you know through the car instead of having them go all the way down you know like under the car potentially getting a uh, scraped or something like that but yeah so this is the same way goes up to there and goes to there and on this side it'll run above the rear uh, below the rear seat and they both meet up here and like i said they go to the front so i'll probably do the same thing with the steel braided lines so. all right so i've got the um the brake lines off and as you can see here so this hard line goes inside the chassis like i said earlier so what i'll do is i'll just pull this from the inside um i'll have to remove this uh, move the seat a little bit but i'll have to pull that from the inside and i'll basically do my steel braided lines in the same routing that the uh that these oem lines are um if they're gonna fit i'm pretty sure they'll fit but uh, like i said i'm gonna test it out first but um that way i could utilize the same routing from factory yes, sir just first moved the uh the rear seat carpet and um, i was gonna be able to get to those lines and everything but i figured i'd go ahead and just take the whole seat out and it'll you know i could have a better view for you guys but um so you could see that the the one uh hard line from the driver's side rear comes up from there it comes up through here and it meets up with this passenger side line and you see it goes up right here and up to the front of the firewall, like I said. But um, we just yank all this out, and when I go back in, I'll just follow the same follow the same trace. Really, I'll try to use this um, little cover as well uh, if I need to. But yeah.
So yeah, this is the hard line that uh, comes through the car that went out to the back to the rear drums. So, like I said, it goes up through there, all the way to the side, all the way up through behind that behind the dash. So I'll probably cut it halfway through there or something. That way, I'm not pulling the whole line through. But yeah, so this is where it comes through. So on this car, the proportion valve is on the side. Probably mount our new one on the wall or something. But yeah, see it goes through there and then tucks down. So I'll probably just cut them here. That way I'm not pulling through a whole bunch of lines, pulling a whole bunch of lines through. But uh, yeah. Little H2B wagon. This is the brake proportion valve here, mounted on the side. I've already got most of these loose, but um, I'm gonna take these brake, the hard lines off. And so these two lines that go in the back, I've already uh, cut it from the inside. So I should be able to just pull it straight out if there's no other clips uh, like directly behind this firewall. So we'll see. what was under the car this is in the rear going to the drums it went inside there and went all the way up to there this was right at the far wall cut it into your proportion valve so i just cut it in sections i was never going to use the hard line again there's obviously we're replacing the lines and this makes the job easier just to cut it in sections and take it all out instead of trying to take it out in one piece but yeah much through here so these lines will be replaced as well with still braided these are going to the proportion valve as well those two lines are going through there so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to sneak the two still braided lines through there and go out the back the same way but yeah that is the plan
have the still regular lines going through the existing holes that the hard lines are coming through from factory. And what I'll do is get uh, some more rubber little grommets to put in here. That way it's not, the firewall's not cutting to the line, you know, from vibrations or anything. But um, I got them sitting here. I'll probably run the uh, 4040 proportion valve probably on the side where uh, the stock one used to be mounted. So um, we'll see how that goes. But I'm gonna take the rest of these lines out and keep on finishing this up, uh, try to finish this up. I got these lines going through the back and got them already in place for the rear disc conversion as well. So I think it'll be good. I just gotta figure out how it'll be mounted, but I think that'll be cool with the grommet in there. Also, during this uh, conversion, we'll be swapping out the master, the brake master cylinder with a uh, 15th, 16th unit, which is comes on the 91 Civic EX, and also the DA Integra is the same size as well. So we're gonna swap that out. So I'm gonna take these two lines off, and we'll have to take the uh, master cylinder off as well. And like I said, uh, we'll take those hard lines off, and everything will just be still braided, new master cylinder, uh, 4040 proportion valves, full rear disc conversion, um, and we're also going to do the DA front end conversion as well. So this thing will definitely feel a lot better when we stop. Um, like the stopping power will definitely be a lot better. You know, because these front these front rotors, I mean, uh, yeah, the front the brake the uh, the rotors. Yeah, uh, the front rotor size is, I think they're smaller, like nine and a half or something on this Civic. And I know the Integra, the DA Integra is about two, uh, 10 inch, 10.3 or something. So a little over 10 inches um, on, the di on the rotor size. The calipers I'm sure are bigger as well. the 15th 16th uh, brake master cylinder on my EG also I have the Willwood front brakes on there and I did the rear disc conversion at the same time uh, with the master cylinder and my EG definitely stops really good two brake lines going to it and that's it so, and it's held on by two uh, 12 millimeter nuts held on to the brake booster so I have to take those off Placing this with a 15th, 16th unit. This is a 13th. No, actually, uh, this is a 15th, 16th. But um, we'll most likely put the brand new one on, anyways. Um, maybe the lines might uh, bolt in a little bit differently, but we'll compare the two.
All right, so I got all the hard lines out of the engine bay. I've got the master cylinder out. And so all the hard lines are out. So now I'll just be routing the steel braided lines. I did find out that we are missing, I guess they didn't ship the correct lines or all of the lines. So I'm on hold for the moment. Um, got other things to do to it, but I'm on hold as for the brakes for this. But yeah. So there's all the hard lines that were under the hood. Like I said, I cut them in sections um, because to take them out would be a pain to try to do it without breaking the lines. So what I did, I just cut it, in, I cut it about right there because it goes under here at the very back of the far wall, then up and everything. So I just cut it, I cut it here and I cut it over there just to make it easy. But yeah, that's all the hard line junk. All the hard line jump from the rear to what I'll do in the back. So still ready to line will be coming out. Hold on one second. I'm trying to get it. So yeah. So this is where the still ready line comes out and it'll go right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to still use the little factory, factory grommet that came out. Still braided line comes out there. It'll connect to another still braided line. To your rear caliper so yeah it's gonna be fun man it's gonna be fun seeing how these brakes perform like i said it's an h2b powered wagon definitely needs some nice brakes some nice stopping power so so yeah i'll probably make this just one episode of you know disassembling the rear brakes you know the drums getting ready for the rear disc conversion and all the hard line stuff we've done and uh the still braided lines that i've already put in there um i didn't take the front spindles off because i want to still be able to put the wheels on and roll this car out if i have to do something else but um so i'll probably just make this one video uh one episode like a tear down pretty much and um like i said i got a lot more coming for this car suspension uh so, but mainly the brakes, man. This thing is going to stop good now. So it's H2P powered. Definitely need some stopping power. So I appreciate y'all watching. Peace.